four things to prove. Number 1. Prove yourself. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. This is what Paul is, is about. Not for himself, but for these Corinthians. Verse 5. You yourselves test. Now, many times the scripture wants us to test, test ourselves to make sure that we're in the faith, walking in a proper way. And that's all Paul is saying here. So look again at verse 5. He writes, You test yourselves if you are in the faith. And then he says, document yourselves. So test it. And there should be, and this word document means there should be evidence. In the same way that many times when we're, we're under some uh, 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 mandate to, to prove something, we have documents. You know, prove your age. You have a birth certificate. Prove that you live at this home. You have a deed to a property. Prove that, that you're qualified for this job. You have some degree or diploma or some, some certificate of qualification. So Paul is saying, test yourselves in light of God's truth. And there should be evidence from that, that, that you are indeed in God's will. That you, as he says here, that you are in the faith. So look again at verse 5. He says, and makes it emphatic, you yourselves test. Test, he says, if you are in the faith, and you yourselves be documented. Or do you not know yourselves whether... Messiah Yeshua is in you. So he's saying this should be very simple to prove, to give evidence. If indeed Messiah's in you. And if you're confused by this, then perhaps you're not in Messiah, that he's not in you, that you don't have this covenantal relationship. So he's underscoring the fact that if someone is a believer, they test and say, yes. In light of scriptural truth, I am a believer. That being the case, with time, there's going to be documentation. There's going to be evidence of that. There's going to be a, a conforming to the will of God in your life. This is the evidence that he's speaking about here. And if there's not, if you don't recognize that Messiah Yeshua is in you, he says, if that's the case, if you can't recognize, if there's no proof, it is that you are, and it uses this word for, for not being documented in many English Bibles, they'll use a different word saying that you have been disqualified. And what does that simply mean? It's not talking about as some losing your salvation, but it's simply the context is this, that you're unable to prove that you're in Messiah and Messiah's in you, that you have faith. There's no evidence of that. There's no proof. And therefore, because there's no proof, then there's a disqualification. What you've said is not factual. So it's not having something and, and losing it, having it taken away. It's simply that you have no evidence because it was not there. You have said, oh, I'm qualified for this job. And you begin and you're not able to do it. And they say, where is the documentation that you are certified to do this? Well, I don't, I don't have any evidence. I don't have anything that, that proves that I'm qualified for that. And therefore, that position is removed. You were never qualified. You should have never been in that position. It was all based upon falsehood. Verse, verse 6. Number 2. Prove what is acceptable to God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Chapter 1 and verse 10. 
He says, if I was a man pleaser, that is, if I was still trying to please man, I would not be a what? A servant of God. So what Paul is saying here is the same thing. He's saying, my objective, when I rise in the morning, what I want to do is to be pleasing to who? The Lord. Why Lord? Lordship. About recognizing His rule in our life. And people say, well, that seems so harsh. Well, understand something. We should be kingdom-minded. Who is Messiah in regard to this kingdom? He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So maturity recognizes that. Immaturity says, you know, He's my Savior. That's, that's as far as it goes. Now, that can be the case. He can be your Savior. But maturity is when you recognize His Lordship, His rule, His kingdom in your life. So, once again, verse 10. And proving what is pleasing, literally well-pleasing to the Lord. And then he says, in doing so, what's the, the thing that we cannot do? It says, and not uh, uh, having fellowship with the unclean or unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, it says, we are to what? Reprove them. Now, here's a very important truth for maturity. We need to be people, if we're going to be mature in the Lord, we're going to have to be people who can discern things, discern truth, discern what is good, that is what is the will of God. And in doing so, we have to do something. We have to reprove that is chasten those things which are not. So once again, verse 11. Number three, prove all things. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 21. But there's going to be that correlation between that and what the prophets have said of old. Next verse, verse 21. Now I talked about a couple times discernment discernment comes about from this verse so this one is also a very important verse where he says all things you document now it could say in your bible all things you prove or you test what does that mean well again it's not by accident that after he talks about prophecies do not despise prophecies he says Test all things. Now, why test them and how test them? Test them with the word of God. So we read, look again at verse, verse 21. All things you test and that which is good, the good, he says, hold on to. The word is to, to, to seize, to hold on to. Now, what are we supposed to hold, hold on to? That which is good. What does that mean? The will of God. And here's the, the takeaway for us. Prophecy gives us discernment to know what is the will of God. Only through prophecy can we discern what is God's will. Prophecy, what does it do? It produces a repentant spirit, meaning this. Prophecy turns me so many times. Prophets, if we look in the, the Old Testament, what were they doing? They were calling people to repentance. What does that mean? They were turning people to God. Prophecy does that. And when today, as so often is the case for many, many, many congregations, they ignore prophecy. And therefore, the congregation is not turning towards God, but because they are prophetically illiterate, because they do, do not know prophecy, they're able to be turned away from God into sin, into disorder, where the Spirit of God is quenched. There's not going to be any prophetic discernment. That's what he's saying here. Now look at verse 22. Number 4. Prove accusations against elders. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19. Verse 19. Now he says, again, you're still talking about elders. He says, against an elder. And the implication is a ruling elder that's doing well. Against an elder, an accusation do not receive. Now, it's not a period at the end of this. It keeps going. There is a exclusion. He says, against an elder, 
an indictment or a accusation. Do not receive. And then we have the word ectos, which means unless. And then another phrase, a me. That is also except or unless. So when we look at this, if we translate it, it literally would say against an elder, an accusation do not receive unless or accept upon two or three witnesses. So only do so if the Torah would allow such a statement to be made within a judgment scenario. So two or three witnesses, at least two, one does not have any place. We would not consider an accusation of one person alone. Has to be two witnesses, not just people who want to say the same thing, but who have witnessed, who have evidence firsthand. And why it says two or three, two's enough, but three's better. And the implication is what Judaism says, if you have four, five, six, whatever, hear them all that you have a complete and accurate uh, uh, understanding of what has happened. Sometimes someone may do something that seems, seems wrong, but when you get more information, you find that they were not acting in a wrong way. They were doing something that was, was appropriate for the right reason, so you need that full testimony. So he says, against an elder, an accusation, do not accept, unless and if only by two or three witnesses, verse 20.